Hey YouTube, it's the test lead, and today's video is QA interview questions for beginners or entry level people. So, if you're new to the field or just starting out your journey and don't start preparing for interviews, here's a list of questions that you should be able to answer. And remember, the earlier you start preparing for these interviews, the more comfortable you'll be when the interview comes. Because the position is entry level, most of the questions will be geared towards your knowledge and not your experience because you don't have experience really in the field yet. And also this will be QA specific, but I'll make another video about SQL interview questions because along with QA, you have to know SQL as well. So the first question is, what is SDLC or the Software Development Lifecycle? Your response should be something like this. The Software Development Lifecycle is the process of developing software. Each part of the cycle has an entry and exit criteria along with expected deliverables. The steps are in the following order. Requirements gathering, design, development, test, deploy, and maintenance. Okay, cool. You know the software development life cycle. What about the software testing life cycle? What's that? The software testing life cycle is a testing process of the software development life cycle that I previously mentioned. The purpose of the life cycle is the process of testing and finding errors to ensure quality of a product. Each part of the cycle has an entry and exit criteria along with expected deliverables like in a previous cycle. The steps are in the following order. Requirements analysis, test planning, test case development, setup environments, test execution, and test closure. Number three, what is a test plan and what should it include? A test plan is a blueprint for running tests to ensure that software is working as expected. The detailed documentation include the testing scope, strategy, objectives, schedules, estimations, resources required, and deadlines for a project. Number four, what is a use case? A use case is a description if how a person who is using a system or process will accomplish a goal. Use cases help identify test cases to cover a system. Number five, what are some of the different types of testing that you are familiar with? For this answer, you can name a few of these. Just make sure you're familiar with them in case there's a follow-up question about it. So some examples include regression testing, functional testing, non-functional testing, load testing, integration testing, unit testing, black box testing, white box testing, and cross browser testing. Number six, what are some benefits of manual testing over automation testing? Because there are some benefits. For applications or features that only need to be tested once, it may be faster and more cost effective to run a manual test instead of setting up an automation test. UI or user interface testing can sometimes be more accurate because you are getting the real feel of an end user experience. And finally, in manual testing, you may be able to see visually things that look off with a web page that an automation tool may not be able to capture. Number seven, what is the difference between functional testing and non-functional testing? Functional testing tests the functionality of an application and is based on the business requirements or specifications. It usually focuses on the input and outputs of a system. It focuses on if a user presses a button to submit a form, which is input, a test will confirm that the form was submitted and response messages were given to the user, which is output. Types of functional testing include unit testing and application testing. Non-functional testing tests the behavior of an application and is based on customer expectations and performance requirements. It usually focuses on the end user experience while using the application. It focuses on how a system or application performs in different scenarios. An example of a non-functional test would be, if a million people are using the application at the same time, does it still perform well enough not to mess up the end user experience? Types of non-functional testing include performance testing, load testing, and security testing. Number eight, what is a bug? A bug is any kind of error, failure, or unexpected response that prevents a software or application 
from functioning as expected. Nine, what are some of the goals in your career? This is more of a fill you out question. So you have to take your own personal stance here. But here they're basically trying to just fill you out and see if you have a growth mindset and gonna take your job seriously and try to improve or if you're just doing a job to pass time and collect a check every two weeks. Because that matters. That shows your performance while you're at the job. Someone who is ambitious and excited will be open to learning different things on the job. Whereas someone who's just collecting a check, they're going to do the bare minimum not to get fired. So an example answer could be the following. I'm excited to learn and progress in the field, which is why I feel this opportunity will be great for my development. I will be able to grow for your company while also being a valuable contribution to your team. I hope to continue to gain more experience in the field and possibly advance into a more leadership or senior role where I can mentor and help people who are new to the field. And number 10, finally, write a test case for this pen. Don't overthink it. Focus on these main parts of a test case. Title, description, a precondition, assumption, test steps, and expected result. Now let's break it down for your situation. Title, make sure your pen writes on paper. Description, a person using this pen should be able to use it to write on a piece of paper. Precondition, a user must have a pen that has ink in it and a piece of paper. Assumption, the user knows how to write. Now the test steps, pick up the pen. Place a piece of paper close enough to you to write on. Write a list of names on a piece of paper. Write numbers on a piece of paper. Now for the expected result. The piece of paper now has a list of names and numbers on the paper. And that's it. That's 10 entry level QA questions that you should know how to answer. As I also said, you should be able to answer the SQL questions for my SQL interview video for entry level. If you want me to do more questions, please leave a comment below asking for it. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want another video just like this, please take care. Don't forget, subscribe to my email list. It's free. You'll stay up to date with everything. You'll get a discount on all my courses and get them first. And most importantly, don't forget to learn something new today.